Hey Rayleigh and anybody else watching and welcome back to another message from your father. Joshua 17, 18, and 19 today. So if you remember, we've been looking at division of the land. Uh, specifically, we were looking at uh, the divisions of the land for Caleb, son of Jephunneh. Uh, we also looked at Judah, Ephraim, and yesterday I said Manasseh. That was a bold-faced lie. Thought we'd get to Manasseh, we did not. So today we are going to be looking at Manasseh's land allotment. Uh, also, Benjamin's, Simeon's, Zebulun, Issachar, Is, excuse me, Issachar, Asher, Naphtali, Dan, and Joshua's allotments. So a lot, all of that going on in 17 through 19. So now that we've captured all this land, we're going to see exactly what's done with it and what belongs to who. So again, all of that in 17 through 19. So chapter 17. This was the allotment for the tribe of Manasseh as Joseph's firstborn, that is for Machir. Manasseh's firstborn. Machir was the ancestor of the Gileadites, who had received Gilead and Bashan, because the Machirites were great soldiers. So this allotment was for the rest of the people of Manasseh, the clans of Abizer, Halek, Ashriel, Shechem, Hefer, and Shemitah. These are the other male descendants of Manasseh, son of Joseph, by their clans. Now Zileophad, son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, had no sons, but only daughters, whose names were Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milcah, and Terza. They went to Eleazar the priest, Joshua son of Nun, and the elders, and said, The Lord commanded Moses to give us an inheritance among our brothers. So Joshua gave them an inheritance, along with the brothers of their father, according to the Lord's command. Manasseh's share consisted of ten tracts of land besides Gilead and Bashan east of the Jordan, because the daughters of the tribe of Manasseh received an inheritance among the sons. The land of Gilead belonged to the rest of the descendants of Manasseh. The territory of Manasseh extended from Asher to Michmasheth, uh, east of Shechem. The boundary ran southward from there to include the people living in, in Tufa. Manasseh had the land of Tufa, but Tufa itself on the boundary of Manasseh belonged to the Ephraimites. Then the boundary continued south to the Kana Ravine. There were towns belonging to Ephraim lying among the towns of Manasseh, but the boundary of Manasseh was on the northern side of the ravine and ended at the sea. On the south side of the land belonged to Ephraim on the north side to Manasseh. The territory of Manasseh reached the sea and bordered Asher on the north and Issachar on the east. Within Issachar and Asher, Manasseh also had Bethshan, Eblim, and the people of Dor, Endor, Tanakh, and Medigo, together with their surrounding settlements. The third in that list is Naphoth. Yet, the Manassites were not able to occupy these towns, for the Canaanites were determined to live in that region. However, when the Israelites grew stronger, they subjected the Canaanites to forced labor, but did not drive them out completely. The people of Joseph said to Joshua, Why have you given us only one allotment and one portion for an inheritance? We are numerous people, and the Lord has blessed us abundantly. If you are so numerous, Joshua answered, and if the hill country of Ephraim is too small for you, go up into the forest and clear the land for yourselves, there in the land of the Perizzites and Rephites. The people of Joseph replied, The hill country is not enough for us, and all the Canaanites who live in the plain have iron chariots, both those in Bethshan and its settlements, and those in the valley of Jezreel. But Joshua said to the house of Joseph, to Ephraim and Manasseh, You are numerous and very powerful. You will have not only one allotment, but the forested hill country as well. Clear it, and its furthest limits will be yours. Though the Canaanites have iron chariots, and though they are strong, you can drive them out. Chapter 18. The whole assembly of the Israelites gathered at Shiloh and set up the tent of meeting there. The country was brought under their control, but there were still seven Israelite tribes who had not yet received their inheritance. So Joshua said to the Israelites, How long will you wait before you begin to take possession of the land that the Lord your God of your fathers has given you? Appoint three men from each tribe. I will send them out to take a survey of the land and to write a description of it according to the inheritance of each. Then they will return to me. You are to divide the land into seven parts. Judah is to remain in its territory on the south and the house of Joseph in its territory on the north. After you have written descriptions of the seven parts of the land, bring them here to me, and I will cast lots for you in the presence of the Lord our God. The Levites, however, do not get a portion among you, because the priestly service of the Lord is their inheritance. And Gad, Reuben, and the half-tribe of Manasseh have already received their inheritance on the east side of the Jordan. 
Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave it to them. As the men started on their way to map out the land, Joshua instructed them, Go and make a survey of the land and write a description of it. Then return to me and I will cast lots for you here at Shiloh in the presence of the Lord. So the men left and went through the land. They wrote its description on a scroll town by town in seven parts and returned to Joshua in the camp at Shiloh. Joshua then cast lots for them in Shiloh in the presence of the Lord, and there he distributed the land to the Israelites according to their tribal divisions. The lot came up for the tribe of Benjamin, clan by clan. Their allotted ter territory lay between the tribes of Judah and Joseph. On the north side, their boundary began at the Jordan, past the northern slope of Jericho and headed west into the hill country, from there, or from out at the desert of beth -Avon. From there, it crossed to the south slope of Luz, that is Bethel, and went down to Ataroth, Adar, on the hill south of the lower beth -Haron. From the hill facing beth -Haron, on the south, the boundary turned south along the western side and came out at kirath Baal, that is Kirath-Jerim, a town of the people of Judah. That was its western side. The southern side began at the outskirts of kirjath jerim on the west, and the boundary came out at the spring of the waters of Niftoah. The boundary went down from the foot of the hill facing the valley of Ben-Hinnom, north of the valley of Rephaim. It continued down the Hinnom Valley along the southern slope of the Jebusite city, and so to En-Rogel. It then curved north and went to En-Shemesh, continued to Gileoth, which faces the path of Adumim, and ran down to the stone of Bohan, son of Ruhm of Reuben. It continued to the northern slope of Beth Araba and went down into the Araba. That it then went to the northern slope of Beth Hagla and came out at the northern bay of the Salt Sea, at the mouth of the Jordan in the south. This was the southern boundary. The Jordan formed the boundary on the eastern side. These were the boundaries that marked out the inheritance of the clans of Benjamin on all sides. The tribe of Benjamin, clan by clan, had the following cities. Jericho, Beth Hogla, Emek, Kaziz, Beth Arba, Zemarim, Bethel, Avim, Para, Orphra, Kephar Ammonai, Ophodi, and Geba. Twelve towns in their villages Gibeon, Ramah, Beroth, Mizpah, Kirifath, Mozra, Rechem, Arpeel, Tarla, Zela, Halaf, the Jebusite city that is Jerusalem, Gibeah, and Kirirath, fourteen towns in their villages. This was the inheritance of Benjamin for its clans. Chapter 19. The second lot came out for the tribe of Simeon, clan by clan. Their inheritance lay between the territory of Judah. It included Beersheba, or Sheba, Molda, Hazar, Shual, Bala, Ezem, Eliod, Etelo, excuse me, Eltelad, Bethul, Horma, Ziklag, Beth, Markoboth, Hazar, Sua, Beth Leboeth, and Sharhuhin, thirteen towns in their villages. Ein, Ramon, Ether, and Ashan, four towns in their villages, and all the villages around these towns as far as Balath, Beer, Rama, Rama, and the Negev. This was the inheritance of the tribe of the Simeonites clan by clan. The inheritance of the Simeonites was taken from the share of Judah, because Judah's portion was more than they needed. So the Simeonites received their inheritance within the territory of Judah. The third lot came up for Zebulun, clan by clan. The boundary of the inheritance went as far as Sered. Going west, it ran to Merala, touched Debesh, and extended to the ravine near Jokneam. It turned east from Sered, towards the sunrise, to the territory of Kisloth-Tabor, and went to Deborath, and up to Japhia. Then it continued eastward to Gath-Hefer and eth -Kazin. It came out at Ramon and turned towards Nia. There, the boundary went around on the north to Henanthoth, and it ended at the valley of Iftath, Iftath-el. Included were Katath, Nahual, Shimron, Idla, and Bethlehem. There were twelve towns and their villages. These towns and their villages were the inheritance of Zebulun, clan by clan. The fourth lot came out for Issachar, clan by clan. Their territory included Jezreel, Kusluath, Shunem, Hataram, Ashion, Anaharath, Ribeth, Kishon, Ibez, Remen, or Ref, Remeth, and Ganeem, and Hada, and Beth Paziz. The boundary touched Tabor, uh, Shashuma, and Beth Shemesh, and ended at the Jordan. There were sixteen towns and their villages. 
These towns and their villages were the inheritance of the tribe of Issachar, clan by clan. The fifth lot came out for the tribe of Asher, clan by clan. Their territory included Helkath, Halai, Beten, Arshaf, Alamech, Ahmad, and Mishal. On the west, the boundary touched Carmel and Shehor Libnath. It then turned east towards Bethagon, touched Zebulun and the valley of Ephtath El, and went north to Beth Emek and Neil, passing Kabul on the left. It went to Abdon, Rehob, Haman, and Kana, as far as the greater Sidon. The boundary then went back towards Ramah and went to the fortified city of Tyre, turned towards Hoska, or Hasa, and came out at the sea in the region of Oxib, Uma, Aphek, and Rehob. There were 22 towns in their villages. These towns and their villages were the inheritance of the tribe of Asher, clan by clan. The sixth lot came out for Naphtali, clan by clan. Their boundary went from Halef and the large tree in Zanainim, passing Admai, Nekeb, and Jabneel to Lakem and ending at the Jordan. The boundary ran west through Asnoth Tabor and came out at Hukok. It touched Zebulun on the south, Asher on the west, and the Jordan on the east. The fortified cities were Zedim, Zer, Hamath, Rekath, Kinnereth, Adma, Rama, Hazor, Kadesh, Edri, En Hazor, Iron, Migdal, El, Horem, Beth Enath, and Beth Shemesh. There were nineteen towns in their villages. These towns and their villages were the inheritance of the tribe of Naphtali, clan by clan. The allotment came out for the tribe of Dan, clan by clan. The seventh, excuse me, the seventh lot came out for the tribe of Dan, clan by clan. The territory of their inheritance included Zora, Eshtol, Ir Shemesh, Shablabin, Ahijan, Ilfala, Elon, Timna, Ekron, Atelika, Gibbethon, Balath, Jehud, Beni Barak, Gathrimon, Majarkin, and Rakon, with the area facing Joppa. The Danites had difficulty taking possession of their territory, so they went up and attacked Leshem, took it, and put it to the sword, and occupied it. They settled in Leshem and named it Dan, after their forefather. These are the these towns and their villages were the inheritance of the tribe of Dan, clan by clan. When they had finished dividing the land into its allotted portions, the Israelites gave Joshua, son of Nun, an inheritance among them, as the Lord had commanded. They gave him the town he asked for, Timnath Sarah, in the hill country of Ephraim, and he built up the town and settled there. These are the territories that Eleazar the priest, Joshua son of Nun, and the heads of the tribal clans of Israel assigned by lot at Shiloh in the presence of the Lord at the entrance to the tent of meeting. And so they finished dividing the land. So looking at this, I I don't know why. I guess for some reason there was a connection in my head and I was like, you know, it got me thinking about contentment and how important that is. Now, is this the same situation with the Israelites? Why couldn't the Israelites just be content with what God had given them? That God had given them a peoples, a people group, and had freed them from slavery. Well, because they were obedient to God, right? They knew that God said, if you go into this land, I will give allotments for you. I will give you portions in this land. Just be faithful and go up and take it. So these are the promises that God has given them. And yet again, I still can't help but think the application today almost being, I don't know, opposite or recognizing that God has given us what he has given us. And regardless of what that is, be content with what we have. Now, is it okay to, um, to want to prosper and do a little bit better? I mean, yeah, absolutely. I think that's, I think that's okay, but it's what you do with that. So if you are earning in excess or earning more money, is that necessarily evil? No, I don't think so. I mean, I think the Bible doesn't talk about money as being evil. I think it talks about the love of that money being evil. And often I think that can go hand in hand because the more you have, it seems often that the more you want. So the more you get, it seems like the more you want. But what you're doing with what God has given you is incredibly important. But that's where I think the core of that, recognizing what you have here on earth and what God has allowed you, that contentment is very, very important. So that's my prayer for you, Rayleigh, that you would be content whatever the circumstances, whatever God has allowed you to be the steward of, 
on this earth while you are here, but also recognize that the value that you have in Christ by far trumps any physical value. I mean, by far. So that is my prayer for you, Rayleigh, that you recognize that, that what you have in Christ is already infinitely more than anything this world could offer you. Anyway, know that I love you and I cherish you. I'm praying for you. Uh, for anyone else watching as well, know that I appreciate you so, so much. And we'll plan on seeing you tomorrow. Have a good one.